Okay, in this session, we are going to look at the, uh, <clears throat> the activities, the sectioning activities, um, five, six, seven, and eight. So let's look at the number five. This is uh, webs and section. A web is this right here, and, and the web, its duty is to support this material that's out here unsupported. Um, if this little rib or web wasn't in there, this would be weak. So they've attached the material from the base or from the center body up here to this outer shell. Um, see, this is there's nothing in here. This is all empty in here. So they just have a little bit. Now here's a cutting plane. There's their arrows. There's a cutting plane coming through the part. So this is uh, essentially a full section. So if you could take a bandsaw and cut it in half. Now this right here, if you were to section, and if you look at the side view, I've already got it darkened in. Um, again, you, you can use this as a solution page. Um, it's this part right here. If you were to hatch that all in solid, then it looked like this whole thing is solid material when it's not. It's all empty here, except for that little bit. So therefore, uh, the cutting plane is going longitudinal through the web, and you will not section it because it does give a false representation. So your sectioning would be, we're going to go with 45 degrees again, equal spaced, section lines. And I will not do that, and then we'll just do this portion. And down here. So there's your final solution for that one, number five, um, webs and sections. Again, this does not get sectioned. If you were to section through it, um, it would make it look like this is one big mass, but it's not. It's all empty in here except for that little bit. Uh, let's look at the next one, offset section. Hopefully you understand the concept of an offset section. Uh, the cutting plane here, it's got your arrow and it cuts through a detail. You know, and if you're going to cut through a circle, cut through the whole circle all the way through it. And then the cutting plane offsets to another position and cuts through that. So that's the whole um, idea behind an offset section. Not every feature like this and, and the one above it is all lined up. You, have, you may have holes all over the place. So it's the designer's um, decision how he wants to show the part in section. So there's the, the part that I've darkened in. Uh, now we have to go through and figure out what gets hatched and what doesn't. Well, for cutting, you know, look at the meat that's being cut right here. Um, you can project it over, and that would be this section right here. Then you've got the hole you're cutting through, which, which is here. There's the hole. There's the sunline for the hole. And then this is right here. And that's it. The rest of it. See, this tangent point right here projected across, that's that line right there. And then this solid line here is where this, this tangent here comes and it has a runout condition right there at the center line. So there's material in here until it gets to that tangent point, then it runs out of material and then it's flushed. So there's your tangent line and it's flush all the way down. So there's your offset section. There's the solution for number six. Number seven, okay, <clears throat> this is a broken section. Uh, and what this, this is a broken line A to B. And so anything above A and B up here would be, you're seeing the inside detail. So you're kind of like breaking part of it out. Uh, so you can see the internal feature here. So it's basically, if you were to take a, uh, and it says broken section uh, through hole, so you want to sh represent the hole here. And um, this is the 
is this flange on either side behind or beyond the sec behind the section. So here's the uh, what needs to be hatched here. And that's the final result for that one. And we got the hidden line that represents that. And then right there it becomes solid because you are sectioning and showing the interior feature. And then you got the hole there. And then you got that. And, and again, this outside is the flange beyond. So there's a solution for number seven. And let's look at one more, uh, number eight. Now these are spokes in section. Right. These are kind of like those uh, webs and ribs. Um, it's not solid in here, is it? It's they're just spokes, and there's what five of them equally spaced. The cutting plane is going through, and it's cutting through this way. So it, even though we're cutting through that spoke, you know, do we section it? Well, if we were to section it here, it would it would represent that that would be a full circle of spoke, and it's not. So the sectioning is going to look like this. Okay, so there's the spokes. They're just showing them. Remember, we would take this and revolve it down to the to the center line, project it true size and shape here, true size and shape there. There's the center hub. There's an outer ring. Okay, and that would be the solution for that one. Now, <clears throat> it also says to sketch the revolve section rectangular. So, whatever the distance is here, you can just represent that on the center line up and down. And then this would be, and then you section like this. So there's the the profile. Uh, this is a, a revolved section. So revolved section means revolve it right on that view. Um, it would be the cross section of the spoke. So the person making that part, whether uh, you know whether how they're making it, um, he sees the the cross section. See, if you cut longitudinally through it, you don't section it. If you cut transversely through it, you do section it. So those are some of the rules on spokes, ribs, webs, and section. So there's your final result for number eight.